Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of GGS2 Case 3. We were just talking to Gina and learned that she is now Inspector Gina Lestrade. Or so she self-proclaims. She's a detective in training and Gregson has taken her in, which is really cute and adorable. Uh, we have also learned that we, for some reason, no one, not even the detectives, can look at the device at the moment. So we'll just have to look around elsewhere for the time being. Ah, someone dropped something in the shade of this tree. You ask me, it looks more like they're trying to hide it. Wonder what it is. Part of the experimental device, maybe? Maybe it flew off in the explosion and landed here. Hmm? Did you find something? Uh, no, it's nothing. I should probably make a note of it, just to be safe. Strange instrument. An instrument I've never... An instrument like I've never seen before found lying as if hidden in the shade of a tree on the grounds below the specifically constructed stage. Hey, what? What do you think this is? It looks like a scrap of cloth. Huh. I've never seen cloth like this before. It's kind of thick and stiff. Seems like it would be pretty durable. It looks like it's made of canvas, and it's lined with rubber on the back. It looks a little burnt around the edges. Maybe it has something to do with the explosion. Let's make a note of it quick while Genie's busy yawning. <laughs> Green scrap of cloth. Thick, charred scrap of cloth li lined with rubber found on the grounds under the specially constructed stage. Grounds look like it was rough up the round here. It's almost like something burned here. If you look closely, you can see that there are ashes left scattered around. Well, something exploded on stage, after all. I doubt anyone would have paid much mind to something burning away over here at the time. Are we English really that not observant? I, I think they were just panicking about other stuff at the time, probably. My mistake, I have examined the wrong thing. What am I examining then? This? Okay. All right, so I I made a mistake. Uh, there's a bit weird of a cut here because I, t there is actually a different set of dialogue when I analyzed those two guys up there. So now I gotta do this all over again. Anyway, the crystal tower, or Shui Soto in Japanese. <laughs> Don't worry, there'll be a text translation because lol, that's so bad. Apparently, this bit of architecture is the symbol of the London's World's Fair. The tower reaches to the heavens and is completely made out of glass. A magnificent building like this is unimaginable in Japan. And there's even more to see inside the Crystal Tower. Not only are there observation platforms, but there's everything from an art museum to a botanical garden to other museums in there. There's a three hour long line just to get in the door. Well, I guess the most prominent thing to see in there right now is the glass that was broken by the teleportation experiment. Thanks to that accident, the whole crystal tower is closed down. I guess the only thing you can say about that is that the crystal tower took massive damage. But I guess now people are lining up in droves to get a look at the crime scene from the sky. It's a three hour long line to ride the hot air balloons. Londoners sure are brave. Or reckless. Alright, now I'm gonna examine these two. Hopefully the dialogue will still be there. That's where the bloke who died was teleported to. Are they s still... Calling the experiment a success? What's that wood scaffolding under it for? Oh, the police put that up right away after the accident happened. I guess they had to get the body down somehow. I don't know all the details. You didn't help set up that scaffolding, Gina-san? Look, I'm on patrol duty, okay? It's way more fun hanging out and seeing the sights. You'll get fired. You and Detective Gregson both. Anyway, does this mean... 
the victim really was instantly teleported? This is the stage that the device is sitting on. It's so big, you have to look up to see. I heard from one of the patrolmen earlier that it's 30 feet high. Measurements in feet don't mean much to a Japanese person like me. Um, I guess it would be about 9 meters high. It's been almost a year since you came to London. Why don't you just get used to our measuring system already? Not that it matters, it goes back to the meter system in the future! Either way... Since they built it so tall, it looks like the people in the front row wouldn't have been able to see anything but the wall. They were so eager to see the experiment and lined up to get the best spot, but they ended up being the ones who couldn't see the least. Who could see the least? Come to think of it, in Japan we have a saying, it's darkest at the base of the lampstand. Kinda of feels relevant in this situation, but then again, maybe not. It looks like these stairs lead up to the specialty, con the specially constructed stage. Guess we better have a look at the experimental device up there. Same day unspecified time, World's Fair Experiment Exhibition Stage. So this is a device that exploded, huh? It looks like it was pretty much totally blown apart. Stuff like this is a pretty common sight, though. Really? You've seen something like this before? Yeah, Holmes is crazy about this kind of thing. It's pretty much his dream science experiment. He does it in our room all the time. Science experiments are all about the explosions. That's what he always says. Uh, yeah. Sometimes weird smells come drifting up to the attic, too. I feel like one of his devices exploded once and blew the attic roof completely off. I wish you could have seen it. Ah! Uh, as someone who's currently living in that attic, I'm not really sure how to feel about that. Alright, we might as well get started on our investigation. Uh, Detective Gregson is over there. He's glaring at the device like he's thinking about something. Just looks puzzled, if you ask me. There's a lot of unique looking architecture here at the London's World Fair. I think I remember hearing that Japan had stuff on display here too. Oh, I'd love to go to your country someday. I read about your feudal lords in one of Holmesy's books once. And I'd pay to see Holmesy take on a ninja. We don't have either of those types of people anymore. Really? That's no fun. Uh, but I know a certain prosecutor who wears the same chromage hairstyle as the feudal lords. Chrome mage. Chrome chone mage? Chrome mage. Chomeji? Chome. You know what? This is also gonna be a big tech. Ooh, Chomeji. I want to take a picture with him. It's been a year. I hope it started growing back by now. Um, yeah, about that. Anyway, it looks like it was one heavy gum explosion, huh? If I had to sum it up in a few words, I'd pick total destruction. Well, the part in the middle is where they broke down a person and transmitted him, huh? The shocking part is that they were able to transmit him without sending him blasting off. She's right. That's a pretty important distinction. But do you really think such a thing is possible, Iris-chan? I'm still just a kid. I don't know. That hardly seems fair. Let's see. I bet if I pull this lever... Not so fast! Don't you touch that! <laughs> you came over here so fast! You are practically flying, Gregison. Uh, go easy on this old man, please, young lady. Lady, I'm begging you. 
There you are. Let me make it up to you with some of my herb tea. <sighs> so good. This tea is so bloody good. Huh. It feels like a long time since I last witnessed this sort of exchange. We're Dr. Dirkpoor's lawyers. So why is it? Why is it that we're not allowed to investigate this device? Ha! Ah, even us proper detectives aren't allowed to lay a finger on it! Thanks to this ruddy newfangled special provision for the protection of science and technology law. Special provisions for... The doctor mentioned that earlier. Yeah, I know, not our whole game up on it too. Honestly, look at, look at this government of ours. Looks like this government of ours can chum out to some pretty troublesome policies. But it's fine if we're just looking, right? Well, don't mind, do you? Iris is such a manipulative little girl. <laughs> of course, young lady. Just looking, all right? Naturally. Right, Naruhoroku? Iris Chan is a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Don't mess with Iris. Okay, let's examine the device again. Jeez, considering how seriously this thing exploded, it's a wonder Dr. Dorpor wasn't hurt. Since we got the chance, we might as well take an up-close look. If you so much I touch it, I'll shoot you dead and then pop my own clogs. We won't touch it. Please, don't do anything rash. But can this machine really break down a human body into particles? Don't ask me that with such a doubtful expression on your face. Just one look at the scrap metal and you should be able to come to your own conclusions. It's what I like to say, but none of us are allowed to touch the damn thing. Because of the special provision for the protection of science and technology thing, huh? So right it is! Ugh, this really gets my blood boiling! Huh? Part of the device is made of wood. Ah, there's some sort of tool stuck in the wire mesh. It looks like a screwdriver. How funny! The handle is shaped like an A. Let me see. Uh, you're right. Hold up, you there! Hold up there, you! Don't touch that! If you do, I'll shoot you dead and pop my own clogs! I won't! Actually, I did touch it a little. But he doesn't need to know. <laughs> but I've got to know more about that screwdriver, Greggy said. Leave it to our eagle eye, young lady, to find something like this. But I absolutely can't let you have this. Naruhoroku was the one who found it. I, Lowly Gregson, shall examine it for you. <laughs> he took it with him. Damn it. I'm gonna make up all kinds of rubbish about him in next month's issue. Poor Detective Gregson. He's just doing his job, Iris. I mean, he can only help you so much. What the heck is that? It looks like a giant water wheel. It's called a Ferris wheel. There are people riding in those little capsules. What's the point of it? Well, it's to enjoy pretty scenery while it goes around slowly. Wait, what? That thing spins? It doesn't look like it's moving to me. It's just moving really slowly. It takes about 30 minutes to make one rotation. If they're gonna have it move, I feel like it would be more fun if it spun around faster. That sounds like a whole new ride altogether. Oh, whoops. <laughs> he wants the Ferris pool to go faster. Are like, like, not know to why. Do you really want that? Is 
This piece here is like a little lever. <gasps> Whoa! What the heck? It's like a cross between a bow and a rifle. Maybe it was used just like what, just like I think it was. Crossbow. An instrument found lying as if hidden in the shade of a tree on the grounds, below a specially constructed stage. Actually a collapsible crossbow. I guess this must be for drawing back the bowstring so an arrow can be fired. Especially by the feel of it, I can get some serious tension to fire the arrow. It might have destructive capabilities that Japanese bows can't even hope to compare to. Hmm. I had no idea something like this had even been invented. This groove must be where you put the arrow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a machine that fires arrows automatically. Perfect for someone like me who ends up snapping himself in the ear with the bowstring with two out of three arrows he fires. Wonder if I could beat a Sogi at archery practice if I use one of these. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Naruto does archery and he always loses to a Sogi, but no one is surprised by that. <laughs> well, no, that's cute though. Naruto with a crossbow. Government policy. An experiment where a person is broken down into particles. Sent flying over to the crystal tower. I can't even imagine. Well, it's certainly one of the oddest types of experiments, even among the ones being done here at the World's Fair. To be honest, it's a little shocking. That they allow such dangerous public experiments to be performed here at the London's World Fair, I mean. The British government is putting a lot of effort into developing and promoting new scientific technology right now. Because of that, they're placing a greater emphasis on reform and new policies, even if the situation could be dodgy or dangerous. They're able to get their hands on some sort of new technology that no, one could, uh, no other country has, that could act as a major trump card for England in the new century. Yeah, I'm sure it would. That's why so much importance is being placed on protecting scientists' rights. Their rights? Apparently, until our scientist theories are implemented by technology and become a finalized business, those theories are the scientists' only access. No, the scientists' only assets. That's why the police are forbidden to touch that device. By the special provision for the protection of science and technology. I see. In this case, the ones who have the right to examine the crime scene are, the new, are a new division established by the Yard. The scientific investigation unit is managing the whole thing. Our only duty here is to keep watch. Scientific investigation unit. There's clearly a trick to this thing, and yet as long as there's a bloody bit of paper... ...that will refer to this hunk of junk metal as a scientific device, we're not allowed to touch it. Edison seems really bitter. I mean, can you blame him? He wants to investigate! Let him do his job! The special provision for the protection of science and technology. Can we just... What? S... S... P... P... S... T. Uh, that doesn't even... That doesn't even come out as a good acronym. So the reason no one can touch this device is because of the, um... What was it called again? Oh, God. I'm so tired of saying this word! How many times do I have to say it? The special provision for the protection of science and technology. Hmm, Holmesy mentioned that too. His eyes got all sparkly. It's a new policy developed specifically for the World's Fair. Scientists present new technology and theories to the government which undergo investigation. That guarantees them the right to protect the secrets behind their technology and theories. Secrets? There are so many experiments being exhibited here at the World's Fair every day. That is just, that is almost too much. Well, the majority of them are as dishonest as you are, though. Wow! That was pretty uncalled for. Personally, I think it's that suspiciousness that's so exciting. 
As the chief of security, I have to be present at every one of those experiments. It's gotten to the point. Well, I'm ready to say bug off, science. Think? Everyone's so full of hope. It sounds fun to me. I reckon you'd change your mind about that if you had to spend all day watching these dishonest experiments with their obvious tricks. But making a fake experiment exhibition seems pretty pointless to me. Actually, there is a point. Huh? The British government made another troublesome policy. If they accept that a theory or a piece of technology seems plausible, the government will provide research support funds. Support funds. Every swindler in the world is swarming into Hyde Park, aiming for that funding. And Scotland Yard is in charge of watching over that amicably. Gotten to the point where I'm ready to say bug off, science! Ah, maybe you're right. Dr. Dirtpour. So I heard that Dr. Dirtpour was doing his research in Germany. Yeah, apparently he came back to Great Britain for the World's Fair. He's probably here mostly for the research support funding. Now that you mention it, according to what I heard earlier, the doctor was classmates in... in... What? The doctor's classmate in... Univer the doctor was classmates with... Uh, hold on, this English is bad. Uh, let's see. The doctor... During his university... During his university days, the doctor was classmates with Lord Baroque Van Zeeks. What? What did you just say? No one told me that. But... If he's the prosecutor in charge of this case, then the defendant. His fate will be sealed by the power of the Grim Reaper. Honestly, I never know what's going on in that head of his. Come to think of it, I saw in the paper this morning that he was attacked. Yep, but Reese, Reapy seems to be doing just fine. Oh, well that's a relief. Grim Reaper, huh? Please. How long is this going to keep going on? The Grim Reaper Mystery. The victim in this case is an investor, Mr. Conrad Kingsley. I've heard that he received his judgment by the Grim Reaper. Lord Baroque Banjiks is an outstanding prosecutor, but... And in court, no matter how outstanding the prosecutor, there's no guarantee that justice will prevail. I've heard talk of juries being bought out, and evidence being forged. And that was why the Grim Reaper of O'Bailey came into existence. At first, the Yard of course suspected that Lord Van Zeeks was behind the killings. We thought he was taking justice into his own hand, exposing of villains who managed to evade their guilty verdict. Prosecutor Van Zeeks denies that. He thoroughly investigated him and arrived at a conclusion. That conclusion was that Lord Baroque Van Zeeks had nothing to do with those deaths. I can guarantee that, on my honor as a detective. But then, what the heck is going on? These offenders wouldn't be dying if someone weren't responsible for it. I know that, but we're at a loss. They're called mysteries because no one's figured them out. That's the whole reason for this Grim Reaper business. I heard something from Dr. Dirtpour. He said that Lord Van Zeeze was a good-natured young man back in his university days. What? After he graduated the university, and a certain case ended up changing him into a completely different person. Do you know anything about that? Right not. You totally know! Huh? I've got my hands full just keeping watch over this device. Ask someone else. Gregson totally knows. He just doesn't want to tell us. Now then, are we about done here, defense attorney? Uh, 
I'm sorry? I think it's about time you left. Ashley, get out! Go! It's time for them to show up. Them? A scientific investigation unit, folks. Actually, even we police are going to be kicked out. Whoa, whoa, okay. Looks like things aren't easy for Greg Eason either. Here, help yourself to another thermos of my herb tea. Oh. <laughs> Tyrus is... But here, I feel bad. Take some herbs. I want some of this herb tea because it sounds good. So good. Honestly, it's so bloody good. Well, I think we pretty much investigated everything. I guess we better wrap it up here. So, um, I just thought of something. I wonder if Holmesy knows something. Knows something? About Reapy. Prosecutor Van Zeeks. After he graduated from London University, some huge case happened. Apparently, that had a major impact on his life. Uh, but we don't know where Holmes' son is. Remember? He seemed like he was in the middle of investigating some important case. Yeah, this is for you. Wh what's this? An admission ticket? Madame Roussades. What's this? What? You don't know? It's a show tent that's gotten super popular here in London recently. It's not far from Baker Street. We can go have a look if you want. No, no, I don't have time for playing around today. That's where Holmesy is. What? At this show tent? Yep. So you knew all along. Holmesy told me to absolutely not tell you. Madame Rosades, huh? I don't know whether it has any connection to this case, but... I do kind of wonder what Homesan is up to. I don't think we're gonna have time to actually go there. Uh, there's a little extra thing that I can do right now before we go there, but I think after this extra thing, we're not gonna have time, so... We're probably gonna go to Madame Rosades in the next video. By the way, her Japanese name in this one is Madame Rozak, but we've uh, changed it to Rusad because she is... Well, you'll see in the next video why her name is Rusad. Uh, let me... We're gonna go to the Baroque's office, apparently. This is a little extra scene, so... Don't have to be here, but, uh, we're... We're running short on time, so... I can get this done. Um, Prosecutor Van Zeeks? He totally ignores you. Prosecutors and defense attorney shouldn't interact outside of court. Considering that, the one who's actually behaving rudely here is this man in black. Oh, I see. So that's why. Thank you. Creepy was willing to talk to me. Oh, Lord Van Zeeks. Have you been to the London's World Fair yet? like he's determined to totally ignore you. So he won't even talk to me about unrelated stuff. Aww, poor Naruto. He's just trying to make small talk. Come on, Baroque, be nice. Anyway, all right, that's it. So we will be visiting Madame Rosades and figure out why the heck Sherlock Holmes is there and what is the importance of this particular special tent. I will see you guys then.